Hi, this is Kerry Artak with Wicked Stocks, bringing you your daily Tesla report for Thursday, January 25th, 2024. But before I walk you through the charts, as usual, just want to encourage you to please click like if you haven't already. Subscribe to the Wicked Stocks YouTube channel. Share the content, if you would, with friends and colleagues. And check out WickedStocks.com, where we offer a full suite of both daily and weekly analytical videos just like this one. Daily analysis in the SPY and the Triple Q, that is the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 ETFs. Weekly analysis in the S&P 500 index, the NASDAQ 100 index, the long bond ETF, the TLT, as well as two individual stock picks a week that you never see on YouTube. That is eight a month that cater to the three to five week swing trader out to the three to five month near term investor. We're always looking for at least 20% moves on those stock picks. And you can check out all of this for no cost for five days. We offer a five-day free trial up front with a Wickedstocks.com subscription. So sign up for Wickedstocks.com. Check it all out. If you don't like what you see within five days, you can cancel your subscription at no cost to you whatsoever. Let's jump to the chart, start with the big picture, work our way into the day itself. About five weeks ago, we tested what had been a targeted long-term price ceiling at 254.40 this week, this descending channel top. We tested it five weeks ago. I mentioned how once we test the channel top, you must allow for the possibility of rotating all the way south to the channel bottom, 176 and a quarter and dropping. And that is still the big picture, especially uh, following about a week and a half ago, we settled below this, what I would call midterm support, combination rising channel bottom and two-thirds speed line that is presently 228.48 and 229.97. This area we're not going to see today. In fact, you know, when you know, Tesla announced on Wednesday afternoon that they missed their fourth quarter revenue estimates. Uh, you know, the aftermarket is already in the mid 190s. So we'll probably, well, I don't know what we'll do actually, but there's a very good chance we will open in the vicinity of the late October 194.07 low. This has been a two to three week objective. For the last week and a half, following the settlement below this combination channel bottom speed line in the upper 220s. So this is playing out as expected. And the 176.54 channel bottom, when we settled below the upper 290s, became a three to five week downside objective. That allows the market to bounce for a week or so at 194.07. But there's nothing to say that that will happen. In fact, um, if we happen to break or open today below 194.07, 190.08 is likely. That could be it for the day. I don't know how ugly it's going to get. Certainly bearish, this information. Uh, so, you know, I don't anticipate, uh, how should I put this? I wouldn't suggest buying the market today if we open below 194.07. I should have a horizontal line here, um, and I don't. And I don't. Let me take a look here. I'm going to go back to this chart. So, you know, if we break or open today below 194.07, this 190.08 channel bottom, based off the last month, almost five weeks of activity, is likely today. That could be it for the day. But if we close today below the 194.07 October low, that sets off another secondary sell signal. A tertiary, I suppose you could call. Primarily was below the upper 220s. Secondarily, yes, below 194.07. Then expecting over the next week or two only, 176.54. So what had been, you know, a three to five month objective uh, following the testing five weeks ago could play out inside of two months, perhaps. If we close today below the uh, 194.07 October low, and that may happen. Then we're just another week or two away from testing 176.54. So, you know, once again, uh, it was five weeks ago we were testing the mid-250s. It was in the low low to mid-260s at that time. When we were testing it, I mentioned how you may consider reaching for 180 strike, 170 strike, out of the money puts that don't expire for at least six months. That is still the play. And given the fact that we settled below the upper 220s a week and a half ago, that became the play once again for those of you who didn't do it at that time. And there you have it. And I guess the last thing I will say about all that is, yes, if we close below 194.07 and you're more of a near-term options trader, one to two weeks out, then you can still reach for those 175 strike out of the money puts that don't expire for at least a few weeks. But really, if you've been holding on to these 180, 170 uh, strike out of the money puts for the last five weeks, bravo. That's a great play. Uh, we've been outlining it all along. And if we happen over the next 
you know, week or two, perhaps, to test 176.54. This is your profit-taking zone. Not only a profit-taking zone, but a zone where you can reverse and go long. And that could mean just buying, loading up on Tesla itself in the mid-170s, or it could mean at that point in time, we'll be taking a look once again at this channel top as a possible three to five month upside buy signal once we test 176 and a quarter. That is the dynamic I've been mentioning how we could trade inside the confines of this channel structure for months to come. Let's get back to the day itself. Um, take a look at this chart. I don't see anything there. This chart I've already showed you. This chart. So 21082. This formation we haven't actually tested yet, but you can see we've come very close to doing so over the last few trading days. It is a descending one month channel top. 21082 can contain session strength. You also have 20280 on the downside. Now, you know, the overnight trade is below 20280, uh, the aftermarket trade. Um, overnight, I say sometimes because I'm the old futures, uh, commodity futures, and we call it overnight, but the aftermarket 202.80, we may well open below that, test 194.07 within the day where we could place a weekly low. Once again, 194.07, uh, there's two areas as a two to three week time frame, and that is 194.07 support and the upper 220s resistance. And I will say that, you know, holding below this 21082 formation maintains uh, a bearish dynamic as we move into next week. So bearish tempo remains clearly intact into next week below 21082. And I can't put it all on one chart, but I can say that holding below 21082, there's your mid 170s right here. You can see that over the next two to three weeks, we could test that targeted 176 and a quarter to 177 and a quarter area. But I will also say that if we close today below 19407, and we very well may, uh, by the end of next week, perhaps, we could fall into the mid 170s. Let me go back to this chart here. I don't expect this, but you never know what may happen. If we do close above 210.82 today, that is a good low for the week. That does pivot the market upward into next week. So closing today above 210.82, I do think the upper 220s in reach again by the end of next week. I don't expect the scenario to unfold. What I expect to unfold is opening somewhere in here between 194.07 and 202.80. We could open below 194.07. And if we do, 190.08 is likely today, okay? And if we close below 194.07, uh, then once again, as I've said before, we should over the next, by the end of next week, I think is realistic, reaching our targeted 176.54 level. But once again, I'm gonna go back to this chart and just mention that if we push or open above 210.82, highly unlikely, but if we do, 217.80 is in reach today. And if we close today above 210.82, um, I think you need to go long if you're a three to five day swing trader, because I do see the upper 220s as being in reach again by the end of next week, where we can top out through February, fall away from here. Uh, once again, as I do maintain a three to five week sell signal below the upper 220s, anticipating uh, the mid 170s and dropping. The mid 170s remain, you know, kind of a two to three, three to five month target anyway, following the test five weeks ago below 254.40. You know, I don't know if there's really anything else that I need to really cover. I'm going to leave it at that for Thursday's Tesla report. Please click like, share, subscribe. Check out wickedstocks.com for that five-day free trial. Big day on Wednesday in the SPY. I forgot to mention this. Uh, the uh, SPY hit a 16-month uh, channel top on Wednesday. There is a significant uh, reason to consider uh, bearish rotation as we move into the second quarter in a big way. Uh, I would invite you to check out wickedstocks.com. You'll have immediate access to that daily spy report where you can correlate some of your trades, perhaps, uh, with what we see in Tesla and Apple. That is all I've got for Thursday's Tesla. I'll talk to you tomorrow with Fridays.